So today's, uh, this webinar is going to be PowerShell for fun and profit in uh, SharePoint 2010. The uh, fun and profit part might be a bit of a stretch, but, uh, but it's definitely going to be, uh, going to be fun. So first, the very first uh, part is my, my vanity slide, uh, just to kind of let you all know who I am. I am a SharePoint MVP, and I have been since 2006. Uh, the MVP program, uh, MVPs aren't necessarily the smartest people in the room, and having spent a lot of time with them in the last seven years, they're very rarely the smartest people in the room. But what MVPs are is helpful, and like to do things like this, and teach classes, and, and tweet help, and all that kind of stuff. So if you have questions about SharePoint, or Windows, or Exchange, or PowerShell, or whatever, if you see somebody who's an MVP for that, <clears throat> they're a good, a good place to start, a good resource. Rackspace, we have six SharePoint MVPs uh, on staff, and so we've got a lot of that kind of mentality we like to help, we like to, to mentor and nurture. <clears throat> Along with doing uh, speaking engagements and things like this, I also write. Uh, we published our sixth SharePoint book here a few months ago. There's going to be a link later in the slide deck for that. Hopefully, though, you've all picked that up. It's all within uh, this, you know, within arm's reach right now. You kind of cuddle with it a little bit to make you feel better when SharePoint 2013 starts getting fussy. <clears throat> but that is out there. I'll have a link for that. Uh, I do some consulting. All of the PowerShell things that I'm going to do today are the result of real-world things that I've needed to do. Uh, when I first got into PowerShell, the very first thing that I did was I bought uh, Bruce Payette's book on PowerShell, Bruce is incredibly smart, helped develop PowerShell, but the book wasn't practical. It was just educational. And so uh, all the PowerShell you're going to learn here is practical stuff that you can just use. <clears throat> so our company website, you can go to sharepoint.rackspace.com and find out all the cool things that the SharePoint team at Rackspace is doing, training and consulting and all that stuff. If you have any questions, hopefully easy questions, uh, you can send them to todd.clint at rackspace.com. Don't be embarrassed about sending dumb questions, stupid questions, because I've found they're the easiest to answer. So, uh, so they're all good. Send them that way. I'm also on Twitter. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'll try to answer questions, uh, provide any you know motorcycle maintenance uh, answers, whatever. I'm a pretty friendly guy. Also, in my quest to become the king of all SharePoint media, I also do a weekly netcast on Monday nights at 8.30 Central. And it's kind of like a This Week in SharePoint sort of thing, uh, with uh, apologies to Leo Laporte. It's things that I've done the previous week in SharePoint or things that have happened in the community, service packs that have come out, uh, other people's blog posts that I found, kind of a, a curator sort of thing. Um, that is live every Monday night at 8.30 p.m. Central, and we've got a chat room where you can heckle uh, the chat room in there. It tells me I'm an idiot. Good time had by all. You can stream it live, and then after the fact, you can go to my blog and download it if you want to you know, watch it several times and really, really get to the meat of all of it. And finally, all of the content that I'm going to talk about today, including this uh, great slide deck with that uh, very glamorous picture of me on it, the transcript of all the things that I do, all the notes and everything are going to be available at toddclint.com slash sizzle. Now, much like yourself, I was surprised to find out that toddclint.com slash sizzle was not already taken. I would uh, sure that I would probably had something there already. Sadly, I did not. Um, so it'll all be there also. I'm going to, um, there's already a link there for the registration to this webinar, and that's how uh, you'll be able to watch the recording. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Justin mentioned that there's going to be a recording available. That's the link. So if you lost the original link, you can get it there. So first off, um, we're SharePoint folks. So why why do we care about PowerShell? We, we care about SharePoint. Well, we all know that SharePoint's got a huge footprint. It's got its fingers in everything. So to be a good SharePoint administrator, you've got to be good with a lot of technologies. SQL and Windows and AD and IIS and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And PowerShell is one of them. And if you're going to be touching anything that... Uh, that has to do with Microsoft technology in the next few years, you've got to be comfortable with PowerShell. I was at uh, TechEd in New Orleans, and I was sitting in one of Mark Manassi's sessions, and he's a Windows guy. He's not even a SharePoint guy. He's just a Windows guy. And he said, uh, he was doing a Windows class, and he said, if you have no intention of uh, learning PowerShell, raise your hand. And some people raised their hand, and he said, good. I just wanted to know who wasn't going to be here next year. 
you know, who was going to be working at McDonald's or, uh, you know, bagging groceries or whatever. It is that integral to your job. PowerShell is going to be everywhere. And as the Microsoft products progress, as you see the new versions of things, more and more stuff is uh, falling back on PowerShell. So you just got to get comfortable with it. Um, it lets you do things you're already doing faster, better. It lets you do things that you previously would have had to uh, open up Visual Studio to do. And how terrifying is that? And, and you kind of lose a little bit of your soul when you open up Visual Studio. It's been, it's been proven in empirical studies and all that uh, stuff. It lets you do things. Uh, there are just some, some settings in that that you can only tweak in PowerShell. Uh, so things you can't do in the UI. So it exposes a lot of that kind of stuff. And finally, it's just fun. It's just a good time. You just, you're a better person when you use PowerShell. That's also been proven. Uh, so that's kind of why uh, I've embraced PowerShell. It's, it, I, was, I was very much against it when I found out the SharePoint 2010 was going to rely on it. And then, uh, then I started playing with it, and it won me over. It won my heart. So this is kind of a, a loose agenda, though I'm not going to follow it very well. Basically, if you've already gone out to uh, toddclint.com slash sizzle, and uh, with a URL like that, how couldn't you have? You could, you've already seen my slide deck. There's like nine slides, and we're almost done. So this is all going to be demos, but this is kind of what we're going to be doing uh, with that. So that's the agenda. First, just a couple of key concepts I want to remind everybody of. This is sort of the SharePoint for or the PowerShell for Dummies slide. This is the I don't know where to start. I, I I've forgotten everything. I don't deal with PowerShell every day. This slide is kind of the key things to remember. Uh, get command that that addresses the biggest challenge of any command line environment is just discovering things where stuff's at. Um, I've got a five-year-old daughter. If I set her down in front of central admin and let her click long enough, she could find out how to create a, a new site collection. She could click enough of the, of the pretty pictures. Put her down in front of PowerShell, though, she'll be able to spell her name, you know, the cat's name, that kind of stuff, and that's about it. So get command is how you discover things, how you discover the command that you're looking for. And all of the SharePoint uh, commandlets, the noun part will start with, uh, SP. So the get command star SP star will get you the SharePoint commandlets. And this session is uh, focused on SharePoint 2010 because the bulk of the SharePoint consuming world is using SharePoint 2010. But all of this will work with SharePoint 2013 as well. And SharePoint 2010 sits on top of PowerShell version 2, but all of this will also work with PowerShell version 3, which is what SharePoint 2013 uses. They both have this get command. So once you do the get command, you can start looking through the commands and try to figure out you know, which nouns are the ones you want to work with, which verbs are the things that you want to do, so on and so forth. Um, the next thing to remember is help. And help gets you help on a command. And I can tell you that every single time I try to figure something out, my workflow is I run get command till I figure out the commandlet that I want to use. I run help on that commandlet to get an idea what it does, and then I do an examples that kind of shows me how to work it. Now, a PowerShell, much like Share, only goes by one name, but its full name is Windows PowerShell, and that kind of gives us an idea that it's owned by the Windows team. And the Windows team has some hard and fast rules about PowerShell, and they so any Microsoft product that uses PowerShell has to conform to these rules. One of those rules is that every commandlet has to have an example. Has to be. Every single one of them. So before the PowerShell team or the SharePoint team could put out SharePoint with all the PowerShell commandlets, all 500 and however many had to have examples. But, so that's good, because then for everything we want to do, we can walk through some examples. The bad news is the PowerShell team missed a beat, and they didn't require that the examples actually work or be accurate. Uh, and for the most part, they are, but there's a few out there that don't uh, don't work. So if you do go out and do a, a get help on something and use examples, if the example doesn't work, well, that's there's a few that are like that. But for the most part, they're going to kind of guide you down the road and uh, and get you where you want to go. The next uh, the next commandlet that I like to to use is get member. And once we figure out what kind of object we're working with, and I'll talk about objects in a minute. Um, then get member tells us the members of that object, the things that we can do to it, the things that we can look at. And so that's kind of one of the, the first things that I do when I'm messing with a new object type is a get member, kind of see what's, uh, what it's got. 
Get Alias is another one of those things uh, that you just got to know. I'm not a big fan of it, but PowerShell derived some of the best things from the scripting languages that existed when it was developed. And so uh, it's got some great things from DOS. It's got some great things from Unix, you know, the Bash shells and C shells and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that it has is short names for stuff, aliases. So what one of the rules that the PowerShell team has is that every commandlet has to be in the form of verb dash noun, get dash command, get dash member, new SP site, so on and so forth. So as you're looking at people's PowerShell on the internet, as you're going to people's blogs and stuff like that, you might start seeing some things that aren't, you know, don't don't match that uh, formula, and you might see some crazy uh, symbols in there as well, percent signs and stuff like that. Get alias is your Rosetta Stone for those. You can run get alias and see if you know see what the thing you're looking at that doesn't fit is really an alias for something that does fit. So like the percent sign is an alias for for each object. So that's a good one that helps you figure out what scripts are doing. Get out. I don't know how that got in there. Um, so let's uh, let's just uh, get into PowerShell, do uh, do some demos, play around a little bit. Let me uh, get that out of there. We do have the chat room open there, and I am watching that, monitoring it with an eagle eye. And so if you've got any questions about anything that I've been talking about, feel free to throw them in there. If you have uh, general questions, Justin might take them, but if they're, uh, if they're PowerShell-y questions, I can see them, and I'll, uh, I'll make you a star and, uh, and mention you on, on the, the webinar here. Okay, so like I said, this is uh, the focus of this webinar is SharePoint 2010. So we've got just a regular SharePoint 2008 R2 uh, server here. Lots of uh, patches and all that stuff on here. But we've got SharePoint. And the way that we open up PowerShell for uh, SharePoint is with this SharePoint 2010 management shell. And it's normally hidden under here. Uh, but I do make a couple of adjustments to this, and, and I, I should have undone this one just so I could show you how to do it again. Um, so I go to PowerShell a lot, and if I'm logging into a SharePoint server, it's probably to, to open up PowerShell or something, because I'm going to do as much remotely as I can. So one thing that I do is I right-click on here, and I say pin to the start menu. I want that, uh, that PowerShell link just as close as I can get it so I can jump in there as fast as I can. And then another thing that I do is after that's created, I go into its properties under advanced, because if you're in this class, you, you can handle the advanced stuff. You're, uh, you're up for it. And I click this run as administrator. The SharePoint uh, module, when it comes into PowerShell, assumes that it can run as administrator. It needs to do things to the, to the server. So if you don't do this, you're going to get all kinds of errors. You're not going to know why. So, so that I don't have to remember to right click and run as administrator, I just change the shortcut. And that puts this up here, and that gets me uh, this little guy right up here. So we'll let that, uh, let that load up here. Okay, so um, I mentioned that if you go to toddclint.com slash sizzle, you'll be able to get notes from everything that I've done today. And part of what's going to populate those notes is one of my favorite things in PowerShell. This is this was one of the turning points for me with PowerShell, was learning about the PowerShell transcript. So if I type start transcript, what's going to happen is PowerShell is going to create a text file here that has everything that I type and everything that PowerShell tells me back. So for things like this, it's obviously it's great because I'm going to start this PowerShell or this transcript, and then when this webinar is done, I'm going to upload it to the Sizzle site, and you guys can download it and see all the stuff that I did. From a day-to-day -day thing, it's great because, number one, it's a good CYA. If something happens and you're doing stuff in PowerShell and it breaks, you can always just jump into the transcript and see what happened. And as a consultant, one of the services that I offer is Scapegoat, uh, apparently. I get blamed for a lot of things when I jump on people's uh, farms, and so this is a nice, uh, nice way to, to deflect some of that. The other thing is, hopefully, after you get out of this, uh, this webinar, the, the PowerShell fires will be burning bright and hot in your soul. And so you're going to jump out to PowerShell and you're going to try all kinds of crazy stuff. And then the next day or the next week, you're going to forget everything that you did. 
So another great thing that I love about this transcript is after I figured something out and then forgotten it, I can go back and look at my transcripts and hopefully it won't take me quite as long uh, to recreate that, uh, that magic. So another um, thing that I like to do, just because you know I like to show off and all that, is I like to change the title. So let's do something like this. And that changes the title of my uh, box. That was free. That's got nothing to do with uh, SharePoint. No extra charge. That did also show up. I like to set my quick edit so I can easily copy and paste stuff. Okay. So now let's dig into some of the, uh, the SharePoint stuff. So we mentioned the get command bit. So we can do get command and we can do star sp star. I'm going to pipe this through more so that it gets uh, paged because there are 500 and some of these little guys. Um, so we can see we've got all these. Now I also got all this other crud. We can see this showed up. That's got nothing to do with SharePoint. What are all these applications? This is, this is a bad idea. So what I can do is I did see a couple that made sense. So this looks good. This looks good. So I have a couple of options. I can do get command noun sp. Oh, that's looking good because I told you before that all of the uh, SharePoint commandlets, the noun starts with sp. Now in SharePoint 2013, that's not as here adhered to quite as closely. There are a couple of other products like uh, I think Distributed Cache has a couple of commandlets that don't start with sp. But for 2010, you're in good shape. You can do that. Uh, and this will give you all of your, this is nothing but SharePoint goodness in here. The other thing you can do is all of these commandlets are part of the module, that uh, a PowerShell module we had to load so the PowerShell knew how to talk to SharePoint. We can also find them that way. So we can say, show me all of the commandlets from Microsoft SharePoint PowerShell. Same thing. So you got uh, got some options. So someone in the chat room is saying, okay, thought, thought the screen had frozen. That was, uh, that was scary there for a minute, thought I lost you guys. <clears throat> so whenever you're trying to figure out things, because there's, there's a progression uh, with, with PowerShell as you, as you start to master it. And the first step, and I think this is a very important step, is to, to get familiar with how to use PowerShell, is start using it to do tasks that you already do create site collections, create service applications, that kind of stuff. Things that take you 10 seconds in central admin. Spend the four hours figuring out how to do it in PowerShell. I promise that window will get smaller and smaller. But that's kind of the first stage, is things that you've already uh, need to do and know how to do, start doing those in PowerShell. As you start progressing, you're going to start trying to think of new things to do in PowerShell, or somebody's going to throw a thing at you that can't be done, and you're going to jump into PowerShell and try to figure it out. This whole get command thing is part of that. So if somebody asks, you know, hey, uh, you know, how do I uh, install a, a security trimmer, you know, for uh, for search? Well, then you jump in here, you see that. That's that's your first uh, first clue as to how to do that. So knowing how to do this uh, this get command, and let's just see what this command does. So then the next thing is help, and that tells. <laughs> That was a really bad example. Let's try this one instead. As you can tell, this was a uh, very, very rehearsed uh, thing. So we can see that this enable SP timer job uh, enables a timer job. That's good. That could make that makes sense. We can see all the parameters and all that. We can see that it takes a, uh, a bind from the from the pipeline. That's good. Uh, and then we can see down here it gives examples. So let's uh, let's do that. All right, that makes sense. So we get a timer job, and then we enable it. So this is kind of how the process goes. So when I'm trying to figure out new things in uh, PowerShell, that's kind of the process that I go through. Now, one of the, uh, the actual real-world things that I use this for is the health analyzer service. So when you install SharePoint brand new, everything looks great. You go to central admin, and it feels like something's missing. And that something is the big, ugly red bar across the top telling you that SharePoint is broken. The reason for that is that Health Analyzer is all run by timer jobs. 
And those timer jobs don't all run on the same frequency. So some run hourly, some run daily, some run weekly. So what you end up with is this situation where after you install SharePoint, everything looks fine, but then a couple days later, something pops up, and then a week later, something pops up, uh, and you have to wait you know, a month or so for all those to fire. So I got tired of that. So I decided that I wanted to figure out if there's a way in PowerShell to just run them all at once. So I know that there are some uh, commandlets with timer job in the name. So let's see all of them. Okay, so these are all pretty self-explanatory. Disable, enable, get, set, start. Okay, so we've seen how get works. You give it a name. And so I did some poking around, and all of the health analyzer timer job rules uh, names had health dash in them. So I said, show me all of the timer jobs. Get all the timer jobs. Oh, my paste didn't work. I can type it out. Get me all of the timer jobs where the name is like health. So this just says PowerShell, loop through them all, give me back the ones that have uh, health in the name. Okay, so there's a bunch of them. So it turns out there's timer jobs that uh, for each period, and then it kicks off the health analyzer rules for the different uh, for the different scopes, webs, all that kind of stuff. So now we've got this. Now what do we do? Well, we look up here. We see disable, no, nah, enable, no, nah, get, no, nah, set, no, nah, start. Start looks good. What does start do? Does start do what I think it does? Yes, yes it does. So it takes a timer job from the pipeline, which is what that is. So it will take all these and it will start them. And so I can, with this one command, I can run every health analyzer uh, rule and then get back, uh, get that red bar up there. So as a consultant, and I'm not going to run it because it's going to take some time on this, uh, this machine, and we've got other things to look at. We don't have time to wait for timer jobs. Um, but that, uh, so let's do that. Um, so that kicks them all off. Then as a consultant, that uh, lets me get into a conversation with a customer about what each of those are. Some of them you can't fix, like the whole, you know, farm account is a local admin, but it has to be for the user profile service, that whole uh, hysterical gag. Uh, but it gets them all up front so that they don't perk up over the next few days. So that was a good example of, a, of an applicable thing that I learned uh, going through that. So one of the other things uh, that I've been asked about is getting like a list of the, the taxonomy, what everything looks like, wh you know, how many site collections there are, uh, that kind of stuff. And so we know if we do our whole uh, get command deal, we know that the noun for a site collection is an SP site, and we know we can do get SP site and get a list of all of our site collections. So that's kind of handy. But what do we do with it? And, and, and we haven't given... PowerShell, any information on what we need to know. So what I found was most of the time people wanted to know what the URL was, what the template of the root web was, that kind of stuff. So I put together uh, this little number right here. I'll let that run for a second. And so I get this list of site collections like I've got here. I pipe it through select object, and I'm bad there. I shouldn't use aliases, but I do. And I say, uh, PowerShell, this object here has a bunch of properties. I want you to give me the URL, which is this. The owner, which is this. Questionably not that. I'm not sure why. And then I did some fancy footwork here, kind of showing off a little bit. And I say, uh, use the label template. So that shows up here. And then I say, take the site collections root web and give me its web template. Uh, name and ID. So a couple of things here. We've got this get SP site. How did I know how to do all that? Well, this is our friend get member. And this is all of the members of the get SP site or the SP site object right here. Now you can get it this way. If you uh, are comfortable with your administrative uh, manly hood and womanly hood, you can also go out to MSDN uh, but if any of your coworkers or friends see you doing that, they're probably going to think you're a developer and uh, and stop talking to you. But this gives me all of the type, uh, all of the properties for this object. So we've got methods. Methods are things that you can do uh, to the object, and properties are things about 
the object. And the best description that I've ever heard about objects is to think about them as a car. So if you've got an object type of car, there are things that you can do to the car, start the car, stop the car, drive the car off a cliff, whatever. And there are properties about the car, color, number of doors, make, model, that kind of stuff. And there are many instances of the car object. There are uh, three instances of the car object in my garage right now. And uh, one of them, that, it, that object's color is black. One of them, it's blue, so on and so forth. So anytime I've got a new object that I'm working with, or even old objects, I run it through GetMember, and I find out uh, you know, what's there. And so that's how I discovered the URL and the owner and that kind of stuff. They are all down here. So there's URL. Um, owner is right there. We've got the secondary owner, which ironically is called contact. Um, and so that, uh, that shows up there. Um, so Larry in the chat room is asking, are there any forums where people discuss how to do stuff like this? I would like to generate an inventory of the list items and documents in a site collection with URLs, creators, creation date, last modified, last access size, number of versions, stuff like that. Larry, uh, you are a man. You, you sound very demanding, but fortunately, Larry, uh, before the end of this uh, webinar, you will be able to do that. I will show you how to do that, that exact thing. Now, if there's other things you want to do, We'll have to see, but that particular itch, I'll be able to scratch. Um, as for where there are forums uh, for this, MSDN's got some good forums that you can look at. Uh, PowerShell.org used to have a SharePoint forum, but I don't think they do anymore. Uh, there's, I noticed in the, the, uh, the members list, there's a couple of PowerShell folks in there. So if PowerShell.org does have a link for that, uh, go ahead and throw those up. I'm, uh, I'm looking at you, John, for one of those. Uh, but also, Twitter, Larry, if you're on Twitter, you can do a whole, um, you know, do the hashtag SP help and ask this kind of question. And uh, But we will get to exactly that thing. So um, the way that I was able to formulate that select statement, as I just went through here, looked at the stuff. If I wanted to export that out, if I wanted to maybe uh, replicate this to another environment, I could use the export CSV commandlet. And I could do the get help on that to find out, uh, you know, what that uh, the usage looks like. But I know what it looks like, so I'm going to give it a path. I'm going to say uh, sites.csv, churning in the background, wheels turning, steam coming out. And then if I go to this directory, and that was a rotten directory to put that in, I've got this CSV file. And so I can take this, this has got all that information, and for these ones where the owner didn't come through, I could edit stuff so I could, uh, this is just a text file, so I could uh, do that and do that, save it all out, and then um, I could go the other way with it, and I could say, I don't want to get them because I've already got them, I want to create them, how would I do that? So, this is, oh, wrong window. If I do get command and I say give me all the commands that have CSV, so we've got convert from blah blah blah, uh, import CSV, well we just did an export CSV so there's a good place to start with that. So if I do import CSV, <laughs> saved games, that's important on my server, there's that CSV file that I just had, it's got all my information in it, so now I can pipe that to new SP site, I can spell uh, spell that right. Um, actually, I need to, to loop through it. And actually, I've got uh, I've got this command in another window. Let me just paste it over. I'm not going to run it because I don't want to create them. Uh, it'll take too long. But that command right there, importing the sites, so make the file name the same. Um, and then piping that through for each object, and then for each one of those objects, create a new SP site with the URL column, which is uh, we're getting from there, alias column um, that we're getting from there, and uh, it will create the site collections. Now, this is not creating the root webs. We would have to do that, but we could, of course, script all that. So, And I'm putting that little hashtag at the beginning. That hashtag is the PowerShell uh, way to say this is a comment so that I can uh, throw it on the command line here. It'll show up in the uh, transcript, but it's not actually going to run. 
that's what I'm doing there. So we can also do the same sort of thing with webs if we wanted to. Um, so we can do get SP web, same sort of thing. Do that, same thing, and we do format table so we can see it. That's not how you spell format. So we can see that's got all the information that we want. So we could do the same thing. We could export that out to a CSV. We could say uh, export CSV. Jeez, can't type with an audience. CSV path webs.csv. Same deal. And then we could use the import CSV new SP web, and we could build out a very quick and big taxonomy. This is good for test environments if you want to make sure that uh, they look the same. It's also a decent auditing thing if you just want to know what's there. Uh, we've got that as well. Okay, so that's just kind of some, uh, some things that have come up that I've done in the past. Let's move on to my next set of examples. So one of the uh, more popular blog posts that I've had, well, let's, let's do this. So if you want to know all of the blog posts that I've had that, that deal with PowerShell, you can go to toddclint.com slash PowerShell. One of the more popular ones that I've had lately is this one on how to use PowerShell to warm up our web apps in SharePoint 2013. We've got that age-old problem where everybody that hits SharePoint in the morning the first time gets a bad experience because the app pools have to warm up. And we, uh, we know our app pools are these little devils right here, these W3, WP processes. Every time somebody, uh, you know, every night IIS recycles the, the web app app pool. So every morning somebody's got to hit every one of them, warm them up. Those people call you. They interrupt your free cell games or watching, uh, you know, cats fall off of tables on YouTube. Whatever you do, I'm not going to judge. Um, that makes for cranky users. So since SharePoint 2003, there have been numerous ways to handle this, scripts you could run and programs you could download and all that. And so as I was perusing through uh, PowerShell v3 a while back, I saw a new commandlet, invoke web request, which does exactly what it sounds like. And so you can use this to hit all of your app pools and warm them all up, schedule it, do whatever. But since this is PowerShell v3 and SharePoint 2013, it won't work for today's demo. And I forgot to tell Justin to queue up the sad trombone, trombone sound for this, but there is a way to do this. So since uh, the beginning of time, since people communicated with smoke and by banging rocks together, there has been a command line utility for Unix environments called wget that just gets things over the web. Um, and so for SharePoint 2010, if you don't mind downloading this binary and its uh, dependencies, you can do the same thing. So I've done that uh, for today. So let's look at this. This is going to slow things down a little bit. We see this web app uh, here is this app pool. So we can go here. Things are snappy, lightning fast, the way, uh, the way SharePoint is, the way we're used to seeing it. Uh, and so if I go out to... PowerShell and I do an IIS reset, that's going to go away. That web app's going to recycle and go away. And now the next person that hits SharePoint is potentially going to be, you know, someone in accounting at 8 o'clock or whatever, and they're going to whine and complain because SharePoint's slow. Now we can warm this up. This is central admin. You'll notice it's uh, shut down too. We can warm it up by hitting that, but that's that's slow. That's the thing we're trying to get away from, and that's that one right there. So if you have wget, if you download it, and I've got it, you need wget itself, which is that little command line guy there, and then you need the dependencies, which are these guys right here. If you don't, uh, if you don't get those, it won't work. So what you could do is, okay, so there's that. We know that PowerShell has, or yeah, that PowerShell can give us all of our web apps. So if we go SP Web App, those are all the things that we want to warm up. That's the that's the thing. Um, and so we've already got a list of the places, so we just need to find a way to send that, you know, to something else. So in the SharePoint 2013 version, I just send that to um, invoke web request. And we're good, but we don't have that in 2010. So we use get uh, wget instead, and it looks a little something like this. 
So we're uh, getting our SP webs, we're piping them through for each, and we're saying for each of those, spit out the name just because I like to uh, show off a little bit, run wget against the URL of the web app, so that's this column right here. And then we have to log in. If they're not anonymous, we have to log into them. So uh, I've chosen the search content account because that's one of the accounts that's going to have access to everything. And so I chose that one. Uh, obviously, this gives passwords in plain text, so you know, do your due diligence on all that. And then it just outputs it to a, a null document. So if, now what we're going to watch for over here is we're going to watch for a W3WP process that's running as SP Web App. That's going to tell us that our web app got hit. So we'll hit that. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. Always make sure you're in the right directory, especially if you're uh, doing this in front of a group of people. Oh, much better. Okay, so that's going to run for a second. There's our app pool. Um, so Mike Robbins in the chat room, for those of you who don't know, Mike Robbins is a celebrity. He won one of the uh, Power Scripting Games competitions here in the last year. Big, big PowerShell guy. Uh, he asked, couldn't you just use invoke web request and pipe the output to out null with a scheduled task? Yes, in SharePoint 2013 you can, Mike, but SharePoint 2010 runs on PowerShell v2. PowerShell v2 doesn't have invoke web requests, so I have to do this, uh, this song and dance here. But your, uh, your, the rest of your thing is, is absolutely right. You could schedule the task in Windows. You could do the out null thing uh, to, to not have any output. But that's absolutely right. Um, so now, if I go over here to SharePoint, this is still going to be fast because now my uh, my web apps uh, big. Now, a couple of notes on just hydrating web apps. Every type of template has to do some pre-compiling. So if you've got uh, team sites and publishing sites, you're going to want to hit one of each to kind of keep things going. All right, so that's one of my favorite ones. It just whole, you know, people ask that all the time. How do I get these, uh, make PowerShell not quite so slow? Uh, all right, so one of the things, uh, when I started doing this, these PowerShell sessions a few years ago, I, I did more of the beginner stuff, kind of the stuff we did at the beginning of this, but audiences got smarter. I, I'm not convinced that I did, but audiences got smarter, and they kind of demanded uh, better examples and things like that. So... Last year when I was in Toronto at the SP uh, Summit, I, uh, yeah, Toronto, um, it was about partway through the session, I'm just like, start throwing out things that you can't do. Let's figure out how to do them in PowerShell. Just kind of, and so I've kind of adopted that, uh, that mentality. So one of the things that has come up when I've asked that is versions, versions in documents. Now, this isn't as bad in SharePoint 2013 because of shredded storage, but in SharePoint 2010, we had this, this problem where if somebody enabled versioning on a document library but didn't set a maximum number of versions, then people could upload hundreds of versions of the same document, and it would just balloon inside of the content database. And so then your uh, weary SharePoint administrator would go in and set a maximum number of versions. But what doesn't happen is the documents that have too many versions don't get pruned until somebody does something with them. So let's look at this, uh, this document library here. We'll look at our settings. We are allowing major versions. We've not set a limit see this all the time rookie mistake happens all over so what happens though so let's go back and look at our uh, <laughs> let's go back and look at our thing so we've got a bunch of documents in here uh, that I've been working on that one's got oh my goodness it's got six versions holy cow uh, this text document it's just gobbling up the space it's got three versions so you can go in here and you can delete a version but if you've got a lot of document libraries and a lot of documents, that's just not, uh, doesn't scale very well. Also, if you do anything to this document after you set the major version, it will adjust it. But again, you have to touch every document. So let's go in here and let's say we're only going to allow two. But I'm not going to save this. Uh, but if I do that, it's not going to prune out those old ones. So this is one of those things that we've got, uh, since I brought this up, two people in the chat room are like, oh, my goodness, that's me too. Holy cow. Um, so this is one of the things that somebody shouted out. So this was a fun experience for me to figure out in PowerShell. So 
How do we break this down? Well, we know that the object we want to work on is a list item. That's the thing with the versions. And so we kind of got to walk down that path. Now, the smallest object that we have commandlets for in uh, PowerShell is the SP web. So we've got um, SP site, SP web, but we don't have SP list or SP list item or any of that kind of stuff. SP web is the smallest, but we need to go farther than that. So we're going to walk around and, and we're going to talk about how to do that. So to get that web object, we need to do uh, get SP web, and here's our URL right here. So we'll do that. Okay, so that, that came back. We've got, uh, we've got a web. That's good. So let's assign that to a variable because we're going to be using that a lot. Now, I don't trust my PowerShell very much, so I always double check this. I always spit out the variable at the end to make sure that it's not empty. Uh, doesn't cost any extra. So we discovered uh, earlier that we can do get member to see what's inside of that object. So let's do get member. I'm going to spare you all the stuff. We know it's not a method. Look, 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 words, words, words. Oh, look at this. There's a property called lists. I wonder if the lists property of a web gives us the lists in libraries. Hmm. Well, that bears some investigation. Let's check that out, folks. So we've got this web object. I type li tab lists. Let's do it. Oh, I don't, and I don't know how fast that's scrolling for you guys. When you do that command, it throws a bunch of crud on your screen. And that's because we've kind of gone past the rope. You know, with the old, if you swim in a lake or whatever, they've got the rope. We've kind of swam a little past that. We've gone past the point where the, the SharePoint team has made things easy and friendly for us. Now we're in the weeds, and so we need to, uh, to, to be a little smarter. So we've got this list thing here. We're going to pipe that through get member. Just an object, nothing special. Actually, it's two objects, but that's beside the point. Um, so we've got the library, SP document library, and SP list is the other one up there. Um, so we need to, we need to kind of to wrestle these things in. So each of these objects has a title property. So let's go. Let's let's do that. Let's say select all these lists for us, but don't give us all the crud. Just give us the titles. Oh yeah, that feels better. So this is all the lists in that web, and you'll see that uh, our trouble list is right that one right there. We've got two ways we can get to that list from here. We can do it by number, so starting with zero, because this is ordinal, not cardinal. Zero, one, two, blah, blah, blah. I think it's 11. We can do it like that, but counting rows of text on the screen is... Uh, kind of cruddy work. We can also do it by title, so we can do this. PowerShell is smart enough to piece this together. Okay, so that's our, our document library. So we're getting closer, so let's, uh, let's set a variable to this. Whatever you do, and I've been doing the up arrow and down arrow stuff a bunch because I'm just I'm comfortable with all this. When you get this, you're like, sweet, that's the thing I want. Don't just hit home and do list equal because all you're going to get is the title. And I don't want to really call anybody out and embarrass anybody, but that may have happened to somebody on this call once or twice. Um, but let's see if we've got the, the list here. And if we want to make sure that we did get the list and not just the title, we can do the get member and see what the object type is at the top. Document library, document library. Okay, so now we need to figure out where all this version stuff is, is hiding. Uh, and so, you know, I'll save you some time. I just ran through here, and I'm like, um, version, major version limit, major with minor version limit. These are all pretty, uh, pretty good suspects to look at to see if it's, uh, it's what we're looking for. So, and there's also, where is it at? Enable versioning. Okay, so we've got list, enable versioning. Jeez, all the way at the end. That's set to true. Yeah, because we can see in the web page over here, we've got it set to true. Now we can see how what's our major version limit. 
Zero. How embarrassing. Okay. So let's uh, go out of this. So Larry in the chat room, I'm going to use him as my example. Sounds like he's going to be fighting this fight uh, himself. So if we go in here, we've got no limit. So what he can do is he can go in here and he can say this major version limit is two. That's all you get for this document library for this list. We can set that. We need to update our um, our object. So now that's written. So now we go in here. We say what's the major version limit? Two. Awesome. More importantly, if we come in here and refresh this page, oh, yeah, that's the stuff right there. Okay, so we've got just two versions. And if we go back to the library, they still have six versions. Um, so what's going? So you can go through and prune them all, or you can check every one of them out, check every one of them back in. But that's for man, that's for losers. We've got PowerShell. We've got uh, we've got we've got power in our hands. So what we can do is we can say, okay, let's walk through all these list items, and for every list item that has more versions than the ma the, the maximum number that we're going to have, delete the versions. So first, let's uh, let's set a variable. Let's say that max equals list major version limit and let's check it out it's two good okay so now let's walk through the items in the list and for each one of them let's uh, let's spit them out if they've got too many versions so that's this right here so these are our problem children okay so knowing them isn't enough but now we've got them in one spot now we can do something else with them so we can run them through a process. We've already got their names, we can chase them down, and I'm going to paste in the, uh, the next bit of code here. Okay, so same sort of thing. So I'm getting all the items in the list. For every one of those, if that item, which is what that means, the dollar sign to PowerShell says the next thing is a variable. The dollar sign says PowerShell, keep your eyes out, the very next thing is a variable. This underscore says this variable, it's like a fill in the blank variable. So you're going to use it when you're looping through things. So it's just whatever the current current object is. So it says if the current object, which is a document, if its version count is greater than max, which is two, up here we just spit it out. But now we're going to take a little bit extra action. We're going to say, we're going to set a, an index variable to the number of versions, and then while that number is greater than the max, in, uh, decrement it by one and delete that uh, that version. So it ran pretty quick. Not much to it. If we go up here now and say, okay, how many are greater than the max? None. Could it be? Could it be? Did we do it? Go back to our problem child. We did. Now there's only two versions. So. Um, this is a great way to do this, to clean all those out. You could run it on all your lists. Uh, I've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, I'm sure there's massive applause in the background. I can't hear it. This is not the way GoToMeeting works, but I'm sure you're all hooping and hollering and, and having a good time uh, learning all that. I got an ooh from the chat room. Excellent. Um, so when I have, um, so in the uh, It's Never Enough for Some People column, Dwayne Alleman says, amazing. Now, can I do it for 2007? Never enough for you, Dwayne. Never enough. Um, so 2007 didn't come with PowerShell natively because when 2007 came out, it was before PowerShell was out. You can, with, with a thing called reflection, you can bolt PowerShell into SharePoint 2007. But then, and, and, you, and you can do all this. It's a little uglier because there aren't uh, commandlets written by the SharePoint team and all that. So, yes, you can do it. Dwayne, exactly the way that I did, though you have to hard code some other things, but the process is the same. I will warn you, uh, Dwayne, you are playing with fire if you use PowerShell with SharePoint 2007. You're playing with, with chainsaws that are on fire because there's no stoppers in there. So be very careful. Do it in a test environment first. Um, um, but then you can do it. Uh, all right, so th the last thing that I wanted to talk about is... Um, as you start working through your PowerShell, uh, you're moving through the uh, the steps of PowerShell, you're going to start wanting to do things like this a lot. So you're saying, this is great, but I've got a bunch of webs and a bunch of lists. If there was a way to package this and, and repeat it and all that kind of stuff, there is. And that word uh, that word is function. 
So what you want to do is you want to write a function. Now this is supposed to be scary, so it's okay that you're scared. Um, but what you could do is you could write a function that did this. Now I didn't write this one doesn't do that. This is kind of a, a just kind of a skeleton. I'm going to put this up on the sizzling site so you can use this as kind of a, of a skeleton. But this is going to create a function called get SP list because we don't have one right now. And I hope <laughs> I hope my previous uh, uh, tests don't still show up in here. Okay, so we don't have any command lists that have uh, the noun SP list. So uh, what we could do is we could write all of this, all of that version stuff in a function, and then pass it a web and loop through and all that kind of stuff. So let's see how this works. Let me show you uh, why you should be excited about this. And Justin, I know you want the mic back in a couple of minutes. I'm, I'm going as fast as my fingers will take me. So I'm going to save it in this directory, uh, and I'm going to save this as... Ooh, not there. Here, a little bit here. So I'm going to call this tk function .ps1. It actually already exists because I was testing earlier. Um, okay, so I've got this tk function. Since I told PowerShell I'm writing a function, I need to introduce it somehow because I can't, you know, I can't do get sp list. Doesn't show up. Okay, so I need to dot source this. I need to do this like this, so I've got a dot that says PowerShell load this and then dot slash means the one in this directory. So now I've got this function that I just created. Um, so this just gives me a list, gives me all the lists in a, uh, in a web. So uh, I can run, now I, I did some fancy things here, and I did this to kind of show you guys, again, to make this a skeleton for you. We can take that out, we don't need that. Um, so I've told it I want to take parameters. I've told it that the parameter URL is mandatory because we can't do a list. We can't get a list if we don't know where we're getting the list from. And I've also done some tricky stuff here. I've told PowerShell to validate it for me. Um, and then if everything works, it's just going to spit out all my lists. So let's do this. But first, let's do this. Ah. No, that might not work. Um, so let's do get sp list. Oh, I'm just going to copy it out of here. And there's all the lists in my web. So PowerShell doesn't come with that. SharePoint didn't come with it, but we were able to write it. So let's see what some of the fun stuff that I did was. Let's say that I messed up the URL. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't write any of this. This is all PowerShell, and that's what this did. This said validate this script. Take the input and run a get SP web against it. And if it doesn't come back true, if it doesn't show you that there's an SP web there, PowerShell just go ahead and yell at the user for me. So it's saying can't validate argument URL, blah, blah. It did all that, so I, so I know I have to have a URL. But what if I don't know the, uh, the parameters that I need? With a normal PowerShell command line, I can just do a dash and tab through it, PowerShell is going to do that for me now. So if I tab, it tabs to URL. So I know that I need that if I'm if, if somebody else is getting it. Um, and if I don't do anything, if I just type it, it's going to say, "Hey, I need a URL. It's mandatory." So then I can pipe it in and I can do that. But obviously, once I get that far, I can type anything in this command block that I need, and I can write whatever. This is an interesting thing. You see, it's not giving me the URL up here. Well, that's a bad example. Up here, since I wrote this as a function, PowerShell is giving me all of its framework. So I can do verbose, and then it gives me verbose stuff. It gives me all the, the, the regular verbose things, but then I can put my own notes in there. So I can put my own debugging stuff into the right verbose. Uh, so this is one of the things as, uh, I, I started... One of the uh, the head guys in the PowerShell community you should be watching is a guy named Don Jones, and one of his mantras is tool making. Make tools so that you can reuse them, and writing functions is, a, is one of those things. So I will put this out on the sizzling site for you guys as well uh, so that you can start using that as a framework.